Well, I've always loved cars. I think ever since I saw a little, uh, as a small kid, I saw a, a Maserati passing by when I was in the back seat of my dad's car. So, uh, you know, I've always been crazy about cars. And I think just as I grew older, I always sort of had um, a little bit the, the feeling that I wanted to design a car, having something to do with how it looks, the sculpture, everything else. I just always felt the car was something you would have a very emotional relationship with. And I think we all kind of feel good about when we see a good looking car and we have a pretty clear opinion about when we don't like a car. Uh, and I think as a designer you probably take a little bit further, you go into the details and you think about how you could do it. And that's kind of how it evolved. So what does Leonardo DiCaprio and Colin Powell have in common? Well they both own this car. Now, Fisker has actually produced 1,500 Karmers already. Now, they've gone on sale, but they're not produced in America, though this is an American company. They're actually built in Finland. The same company that has actually built things like the Saab Convertible or the Boxster. Well, I think one of the cars that I always remembered first was the Maserati Bora, which were a mid-engine car designed by uh, Giorgetto Gigiaro. And it was just sort of one of my kids, you know, dreams. And of course, the Lamborghini Countach is a, is a famous car as well. Uh, the Jaguar E-Type, uh, several Ferraris. So sort of the classical, beautiful sports cars that kind of makes you get butterflies in the stomach. When you see them, you kind of get goosebumps. You just feel like, I gotta have one of these cars one of these days. For me, it was really um, something where I, I felt like it must be so amazing to be able to create such beautiful shapes and forms. The fact that they have a function, obviously, of taking people from A to B, but they also go beyond the function. They, they become part of people's lives. They're part of who we are, who we want to be. So I've actually driven this car before in New York City. Now that we're in LA, though, you can actually drive it on nice, long country roads. From the onset, you get in it, and it feels like a high-end luxury flagship. But when you get into the turns, it actually is quite stable and smooth. Now keep in mind, this is a heavy car, especially with the lithium ion batteries and the two liter motor up front. It's a big car, but it stays flat. It feels comfortable, but most importantly, it's smooth. I think most of my inspiration actually come from the car industry. There's maybe the watch industry could be an example where, where specifically when you think about precision for the instruments, I think watches are something that you can take great inspiration from because it's a lot about precision. Uh, it's really beauty coming together with function, obviously seeing the time and then the beauty of a watch. But really when you come to the shape of a car, uh, a little bit maybe from the animal kingdom, you know, there's also a certain element to human proportions and forms that you can look at. But in the end of the day, a car is a car. Um, so I think my inspiration has mostly been just thinking about the glamorous times, the amazing cars that's been around and how we can kind of create a future where we get those same emotions and the same sense of beauty as we feel there is with some of the old cars. How can we carry this into the future? And, and connect or reconnect, I would almost say, because today I think a lot of people have almost fallen a little bit out of love with cars because we just don't have as many exciting cars on the road today as they used to be. Electric vehicles have always been thought of being not cool. Well, I think Fisker has come around to actually making something that is impressive to the point of revolutionary. For an American company, an American company to build something like this that I would consider very European, you know, with Henrik Fisser being Danish, it makes sense. The style, the materials, yes, and I do admit there are some part bins elements to this car. The adjustment for the mirrors, parts bin. The mirror, the rear view mirror, parts bin. But you want to know something? It doesn't matter because they've built a great package that really transforms the way you can think of a new company building cars. Well, I think, I think the automobile might be the only product in the world you can actually fall in love with. That you can just have almost an emotional connection that you just gotta have it. And I think part of it is that 
the shapes of the vehicle. I mean, there is, there is some, there is some sort of connection between the human shapes and a very sexy looking car. There's no doubt about it. Uh, that sort of attention to the perfection of those shapes, uh, how the light runs over the car, I think is part of it. I think it also comes back to the point, just like a human being, when you see a beautiful human being, you know beneath that beauty there is a character, uh, somebody that, or a character that you might want to explore or get to know, or you might get to like, enjoy. Uh, and I think the third element of specifically the car, it is probably one of the only products we are still allowed today, which could be kind of dangerous. It could be very exciting uh, when treated correctly, but treated wrongly it could also be very dangerous. In fact, it could kill you or other people. So you combine these three things and it's just an amazing, exciting product that I think uh, is the most amazing product in the world. I couldn't imagine a world without cars. So driving dynamics, and when you own a car and when you're going to front over $100,000 for a car, you want to know how it drives. Does this car give me pleasure? Well, no, it is not a GT3. It is not a 7 Series. It is not an S-Class. It is not tested at the Nürburgring. But the features involved with this car actually are quite good. Well, I think after many years in the car industry where um, a lot of things went beyond sort of my expectations or my dreams, uh, you know, being able to design the Z8 uh, that, that went into a James Bond movie, then, you know, going to Aston Martin and, and being able to design two of their cars and, and just meeting amazing people during that time and, and again, seeing some of these cars go into films and, and being at some amazing events where you know, people you admire own and buy these cars and, and, and come up to you and basically tell you they would like to be in your footsteps, being able to do these things. I think all that kind of made me feel like uh, there must be something beyond, uh, you know, something further out, maybe something where I should take the risk uh, to try and see what would be, you know, the next step. It's a little bit like being in a house and you crawl up and you hit the roof and you wonder what is outside, what if I climb up on the roof? It's a little dangerous, but the view is gonna be amazing. And it's kind of what I did. And, and I think, um, you know, specifically when it comes to Fisk Automotive, my inspiration was really to, it was a little bit selfish. It was really thinking, you know, how would the world be if, you know, we have to live with just these sort of ugly, boring, environmental friendly cars that was, you know, around five years ago and there wasn't many and there were there was a lot of little concepts that used to be ugly and slow and I think the future starts to look really bleak for the automobile so I felt a little selfishly that I want to have a cool car I can drive in 10 20 years uh, I want my kids to love and fall in love with cars and drive a cool car so it kind of drove me a little bit to sort of say hey what about if we could make a really exciting very good looking, environmental friendly vehicle that we can fall in love with. We haven't even discussed the design because, well, that's the most obvious. It's beautiful. We cannot forget that the same guy that designed this penned some of the most beautiful cars of the past two decades. This is what you see. And if you wanted to have this in your driveway, I don't think anyone would fault you because this is an American car that looks beautiful. Well, I think it was back in 2000, early 2007, uh, something around that time, that I started to sort of think about, you know, drawing the first sketches of, of the karma. And it really was about creating an uncompromised, absolutely beautiful four-door sedan. And I wanted to, if, there, if I were going to incorporate um, environmental friendly uh, sort of themes or areas of the car, I wanted to be in a way, not just by making it green, painting it green, or by you know, making it strange looking, 
I wanted to do it with elements that, that had a certain purpose. So for instance, the idea came up with putting the entire roof as a solar panel and designing a real cool graphics that actually would be exciting to take a look at. Uh, but the other thing about this car with the Karma was, I wanted to create a vehicle that had a really beautiful shape. A shape you were drawn into, but a shape that went way beyond what we had seen before in a four-door sedan. Now it makes perfect sense for this car to be developed in California. As an American car company, well, this is where this car is going to be sold. This is the hotbed of innovation. LA, San Diego, San Francisco, it makes perfect sense. Now, of course, East Coast markets and, of course, Houston. You have to give Henrik Fisker and his team a lot of credit. They thought this through perfectly. Why would you go anywhere else? But this car, you know, it is very American in the sense of America's about innovation, it's about development, it's about thinking outside the box. And Henrik did a very good job by doing that. The reason we based Fisk Automotive in California, first of all, uh, Barney Carrillo and myself are living here and we obviously started the, the company. Secondly, we also felt that it's really um, the perfect place to start a new car company because if you think about California, it's a very multicultural area. It's a it's a place where there's very little brand loyalty when it comes to cars. In fact, probably any brands. Whatever is the coolest, whatever is the newest and the hippest and the best, you know, is what people go out and buy here. Whereas in the rest of the world, there seems to be a little bit more brand loyalty, even if some brand makes a car this year or something you don't necessarily like that much, you may stick with the brand. The other point, I think, is when you look at the rest of the world, I think the rest of the world see California as a place where uh, they see a lot of new trends coming from California. Uh, and they see California as being innovative because of many other areas of technology that happens here, whether it's Apple or whatever it is. So I think people around the world are used to new, exciting, innovative products coming from California. So for us, that was another good reason to be here. Now we're driving on Mulholland Highway right now. Actually one of the best roads in America. So much fun to drive. And this car just kind of works. Yeah, it has a two liter motor in it and it weighs over 4,000 pounds, but it works. It makes sense in a way. It's fun, it's different. And that's very important. This car is different. In LA, the jaded car culture capital of the world, Everyone looks at it. Everyone asks, what is that thing? It's a Fisker. What is a Fisker? Well, it's the future. It's the most unique, creative, innovative car on the market today. Well, I think the reason that Fisker Automotive have success now and will have success is because we're essentially doing things that nobody else are doing. And that is we're combining extremely beautiful luxurious four-door cars with the extremely, you know, I would say environmental friendly aspects of the automotive industry. Uh, we're doing things that may be too early for a lot of big car makers to do, such as putting a solar roof on the car, such as using reclaimed wood inside the car, uh, and of course the powertrain being able to drive your daily commute. Uh, doing you know 50 miles in electric or 80 kilometers in electric and then you know still being able to go from Los Angeles to New York we have kind of solved what has been the main issue with the pure electric car and that is range anxiety or basically solve what the car really is about I mean the car is about freedom freedom to go wherever you want whenever you want and people are gonna look at you as if you're well not a douchebag which, these days, I would buy a car for just that. There's a lot of history here, even though the car company is not that old. Think about that. This car is changing the game, and it's changing the way we think of luxury and American cars. So the future of Fisker is really going to be about 
a range of cars. You cannot be a car company, of course, just with one car in the long term. So we need to create a range of cars. And the Fisker Karma is really our sort of brand icon. It's what really establishes the brand. And after the Fisker Karma, uh, we are going to launch a series of other vehicles. Being in a lower price class, we have learned a lot from this car. We are going to take a lot of cost out of the powertrain that enables us to come out with some cars in the future, which is going to be in a lower price class. We are planning some other cars in even lower price ranges in the future. We want to expand uh, globally. Uh, we already have dealerships uh, now uh, all over the world, Europe, Middle East, and Asia. Uh, so expansion in terms of sales globally is very important for us. It'll take a few years, but believe me, we're working on it.